Hi, this is your host Abhin Bharatiya and welcome to T3M, our topic of this month. And the topic of this month is data. And today we have with us once again, Adit Madan, Director of Products at Alexio. Adit, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, Sapnil. Glad to be back. And the aspect of data that we are going to talk about today is data activity or egress fee, which makes it very expensive for organizations to move their own data around. Well, the fact is that all major cloud providers allow you to move data into their cloud for free, but if you want to retrieve the data, if you want to migrate or move the data around, then they impose heavy fee. It's a hidden fee, it's fine print, it's known as data egress fee. Adit, uh, explain to our viewers, what is data egress fee? As you know, a lot of times what happens is storing data in the clouds is cheap. uh, And that's what uh, the cloud providers incentivize enterprises to do, that you get all your data to the cloud and then you can make use of all the different compute services that the cloud might provide. But anytime the data moves either across regions of the cloud or when it moves out of the cloud, either for access by on-premises data centers or by access by a different cloud, they they charge you uh, based on the amount of traffic that moves across the network. And, And that's what we call egress fees. And this concept is the same regardless of the cloud uh, provider that we talk about. What kind of organizations should worry about data egress fee? Is it a concern for large organizations who are dealing with huge amount of data that they need to move around? Or is it applicable to anyone putting any amount of data in cloud? So uh, definitely egress fees is is not a concept that applies to all enterprises. It it really depends on the the scale of the enterprise and the complexity of the enterprise. There are some natural reasons for data to be distributed. Uh, A lot of times if an organization goes through mergers and acquisitions and uh, there are natural reasons for uh, data being siloed uh, across uh, different locations, then there is a need to worry about egress fees as everyone wants to get insights uh, or, or drive revenue from the collection of data that they have. So that is one uh, one situation. And another situation these days is as people are accelerating their uh, move or their utilization of AI ML, including deep learning, uh, the availability of GPUs is, is a reason uh, for compute to be separated from, from the data naturally. And, and that's another reason if you're uh, ramping up your AI ML initiatives, that's another reason to pay, pay attention uh, to, to egress fees because you, you might want to compute data uh, away from where it's, it's located or where, away from where the gravity uh, holds it. We talk about data lake, data warehouse or data lake house now companies do move data around for various reasons. It could be a compliance around geographical reasons. It could be within department. It could be to extract value from the data leveraging right AIML platforms and technologies. Can you talk about what are organizations currently doing to deal with this data egress fee? Yeah, I think uh, overall, uh, if you just look at the complexity of, of such a platform, whether it's, it's a combination of a lake, lake house, or a warehouse, j- keeping things all in one place and operating all in one place is, of course, the simplest option out there. So if you put all of your things in one cloud vendor and everything is being done in that one cloud vendor, that is going to be the simplest uh, solution for you. Uh, but if if the economics does not permit, if if there are services that you want to use from another cloud, like uh, like the availability of GPUs, you you will be more more spread out. So once this uh, situation occurs, when uh, once you become a little more spread out across uh, across different locations, uh, a typical approach that we've seen uh, being employed is people would manually copy uh, data across these two environments and. The reason why copying is is preferred option is because uh, direct access incurs egress fees, as as we were talking about before. Data is repeatedly accessed. Uh, in in the case of model training, for example, you would access the same piece of data maybe even up to uh, maybe a hundred times. Uh, so it's repeatedly accessed, and um, that's why copies is something that's that's employed. But copies 
needs you to maintain a team. Uh, you, you would have uh, four or five people uh, to just for this. It's error prone and it has its own set of problems. And that's kind of where uh, we, we come in with our solution to really simplify this process and also eliminate not just the network traffic, but also which causes the egress, but also the complexity that goes along with it. When you look at some of these practices, are they kind of leading to some new patterns or trends the way organizations are looking at their data? Yeah, so so, so these days, the, the trend that we are seeing with AI ML uh, initiatives kicking off in a lot of organizations and, and, and it being especially competitively important for them, not just to drive revenue, but also just survive uh, as, as a company, is uh, we, we are seeing the rise of uh, specialized uh, systems to to tackle uh, the high throughput and performance requirements of, of GPUs and, and, and such. So in, in this case, uh, again, uh, from what the trend that we are seeing from uh, the cloud providers as well is to have a uniform solution uh, which goes across your, your data lake, which is where all of the data lands, but also the consumption of it, not just for analytical purposes in the past, but also uh, for, for model training and, and deep learning and machine learning as well. If I ask you, what advice do you have? How organizations should approach data to cut down on data egress fee and escape data gravity? And also, if you can talk about how is Alexio helping them? One of the advice that we give our uh, our customers is uh, that make sure that you're not uh, main, having to maintain uh, any redundancy uh, in, in your platform. And by that, one of the things I was touching upon before is even if the same piece of data is being consumed for analytical purposes or it, it's being consumed for model training purposes, uh, specialized systems or going down that route of uh, having special purpose systems just for one one specific purpose it's 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 something that we've seen not work out repeatedly that's that's kind of why we went from specialized data warehouses to uh, what we call data lake houses and the flexibility that we offer with that uh, there, there might be there are some some very specific situations which demand that but as much as possible uh, having re- eliminating redundancy uh, within your platform will will go a long way and and especially because uh, with the amount of initiatives that are kicking off uh, you you don't know which which direction will you uh, which will scale faster which specific need within your organization will scale faster and uh, and where Alexio comes into this is uh, one one way of uh, eliminating redundancy is uh, is is having something like us which serves multiple kinds of uh, workloads in your organization. So we propose a solution which um, which sits between different kinds of compute frameworks, whether it's for analytics or, or machine learning, and, and we're able to serve uh, a, a single copy. Uh, or, or from a single data source, uh, multiple different application types without having to move into a specialized system. Of course, we always talk about technology and culture. Does it also require some cultural changes within organizations when it comes to how we should look at data or technological solutions are enough? Uh, I, th- I think that the, the culture aspect is, is definitely there. So I think how you... Uh, form your organization and and the culture could could refer to a lot of different things uh one aspect of a culture could mean how you uh, embrace open source and and how open the technology stack that you're using for for example another part of culture could be uh, how do you structure your teams to specialize on different aspects like do you have one platform team uh, which serves both ai and analytics do you, do you have special uh, uh, do you structure it in a way that you have specialized teams dedicated for both? So not just the, the technical side. I think technical side are, are just the tools that you have available to be more productive. But uh, to your point, uh, there there's a lot on, on the cultural side as well. Uh, on on the first one that I was talking about with being being more open, uh, different things would make sense for an organization at different times. So it, it may make sense for you to use a, a completely bundled up uh, out of the box service at one point, but you may want to migrate to something which is more open o- over time as your platform scales. Adit, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Sopnil. Same here. 